Hey guys, if you're watching, you want to know me, my name is AJ. Welcome back to another episode of Automation. Today, we're going to be building a sensible road car. Something that maybe I would drive or you guys would drive. Something that looks cool and has like a good engine, but not like a crazy four and a half litre V8 like we built last episode. <laughs> so, let's build a new one. What year do we want to go with here? Do we want to go a little bit older? Let's find a body that we like first. So, we want like... I don't know, something like a decent size that looks pretty cool. Like nothing too old looking. We're getting a little bit older here. Now we're going to stay up here. You know, that one's quite nice. That's like a, like a normal Audi sort of shape. We'll go with that. Let's take that. 2009. Let's set our year back to two. Let's set our year back to 2009. There, there we go. Perfect. So now... Depending on what year you set the game at, you're going to have limited options on what you can put into it. Because, like, in 1945, there wasn't traction control and launch control. So you're not going to be able to make a 1945 supercar or hypercar that goes 290 miles an hour. It's not going to be possible. All right. But now we need to be smart about our panel materials. It's 2009. I don't know if we would have partial aluminium or corrosion resistant. We might have corrosion resistant steel back then. But we need to make this car affordable. 2009. Now I'm going to go with steel in 2009. Maybe they would have corrosion resistance. Yeah, all right, corrosion resistance steel. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's going to be good quality. We're going to go with a monocoque chassis. A ladder chassis would be for, like, trucks and older vehicles. Monocoque is, like, your everyday chassis. Uh, the chassis material, let's make it out of either galvanized or corrosion resistant steel. Uh, let's make galvanized steel. Um, it's not quite as, uh, like, you've got the uh, comparison here. Uh, it's cheaper, or uh, it's cheaper to make than corrosion resistance, but it doesn't ru it rusts quicker. <laughs> I want to keep this car relatively cheap, okay? I want it to be cool, but but cheap. Transverse engine in it, and um, we'll go with double wishbone, double wishbone suspension. Again, we're going to be keeping all of our quality sliders at zero. Now, what sort of body do we want? We can have a four door sort of saloon. We can have a hatchback. That looks actually pretty nice. We can have a, a, what did I say? I said a state, didn't I? Did I say a state or hatchback? It's a state. It looks pretty nice. So we can have a hatchback and a four-door hatchback. Oh, and more. Two-door coupe, a convertible two-door, a, a convertible hardtop two-door. Oh, there's a lot of variants. What do we want? We can make a bunch of different ones. I think that's like a BMW 1 Series, isn't it? Yeah, let's do that. Like a BMW 1 Series style car. Right. Let's model it out. I sort of like the bumper how it is. I, I, you know, I don't want to have a huge... We don't need a huge amount of boot space in it. It's a hatchback at the end of the day. And it is a nice four-door. What does this one do? Well, I changed the back window shape. Do I want it to curve back like that? I think that's odd. That looks odd for a back door shape. I think that's a bit better. Uh, where do we want the split of the doors to be? You want usually a slightly bigger front door than rear door, but you want a nice size one so you can get in the back. Uh, where do we want the... You know, we don't need a huge engine in here. We're probably going to go with a 1.8 litre engine in this. We could go with 2 litre. Let's go with a 1.8 litre in here. Um, in fact, next episode we're doing a sport variant. So I've got an idea on how we're going to do that. We're going to bulge these arches out yeah i've got an idea we're going to be building because we need to remember we're building this car for next episode as well because we're going to be using it then oh what is that no go away oh it's like a um like an rx7 or something there we go it's nice a nice overhang on the side there i think that's about right for what we want what color do we want to go for though a nice silver or a nice black oh i think black looks pretty let's let's make our own color now, it adds a colour in a really weird way, because it sort of just adds a new paint. Yeah, there we go, new paint. Uh, and we're going to want to go with... Oh, no, hang on. That's the other paint that we've done. That one. Uh, we're going to go with a, a silver, but like maybe a darker one, like nearly a near black, like a metallic sort of silver. That's about right. We're going to go with that. Tick, save, close, boom. Uh, for the trim, though... Well, you know what? I like I like the grey trim on it as well. We could go with chrome trim. <laughs> I mean, you do get some chrome on cars, but I think that's a little bit too much chrome. We'll go with that one, or... No, no, we'll go with that one. Black. That one. That one. No, I like that one. We're going to go with that one. Right. 
fixtures here. We're going to go with... Oh, this is a YouTube Sensible. And standard trim. We'll be changing that next episode. Right, so what do we want for these headlights here? We want something that looks pretty cool. I mean, I think we used these ones last episode. Let's give these ones a go this episode. Something like that. That follows the bonnet quite nicely. Mm, I don't like them. I'm not a huge fan of them. Uh, what else have we got? Now, they'll be getting more fixtures in time. But for the moment, this is what we have to work with. You know, that's quite nice. That looks a little bit more sensible. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. Well, I, I like the look of that for the for the headlights. Uh, for the tail lights, we want something that goes down here like the BMW 1 Series does. I think that would be really nice to have. Either this one, this one works well as well. These are like little old school mini headlights, aren't they? That wraps around there in a really weird way. They sort of face more towards the back than anywhere else, don't they? All right, let's try and do this one, and then we might have to change the colours a bit. Ooh, it's glitching out a little bit there. It doesn't like that, does it? The car doesn't like these headlights, at all, these tail lights at all. Nope. Have we got anything else that has a nice curve on it? Ooh, these do. We might get smart here. Put those in, but then rotate them up. And then flip them round. What way do I want it? That way. That's the way I wanted it. There we go. We just sort of made our own headlights. you got to be creative. Make your own shapes. Flip them around. That looks good. I'm going to go with that. You can see them from the side there as well. I think that's cool. Indicators. I think we'll stick with this one again. But we're going to put it further up the front here. We're not going to go with the crazy low front one like we did on the last one. I think that's about the right size for an indicator and about the right spot. I don't think we need to change the um, colours of anything here. In fact, I don't think... Can I get an indicator in there? Oh, it does. Oh, cool. All right. Um, that one or that one? That's a bit lighter. Yeah, so we've, we've been able to put the indicators on there as well. Cool. I like it. Perfect. Save. Always press save as often as you can. Uh, indicator we've done. Grill. Now, we don't need a huge amount of cooling on the front here. I don't think we need anything really up the top here. We're just going to go with a nice grill down uh, lower to the, the bottom here. Um, maybe even like a nice little round one. Maybe flip it upside down. It's a little bit sad. I always like cars to look happy. Ow. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Um, or do we want it the other way around? Do we want the grill to be up the only up the top? Well, that's very sort of um, American police car looking, isn't it? Yeah, no, I don't like that. I want something a little bit more angular. Maybe like this. Oh, yeah. That actually sort of fits around the lights. Mm. It sort of fits around the lights well, but sort of doesn't. Ugh, that's, it's so sad. Um, let's try this one. Oh, I do like that. Yeah, or we could go with the BMW look and go with, instead of one grill, we go with two vents. Like how the old BMWs are. You know what they're like. Like that. That's pretty cool. Maybe with some chrome around the side. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we're basically, we're definitely building this off like a BMW 1 Series 100%. I like that. Uh, some little grills on the side, I think. Maybe a little a little grill down the bottom. Something just nice and simple and thin. and Yeah, something like that. Ooh, we've, we've got some glitches. There we go. And uh, tick. Don't change them. Always make sure you tick. Otherwise, you actually end up changing the part. And, and you never want to do that. Put some nice side ones in there as well. Yeah, we'll go with that. Something nice and simple. Turn them a little bit. There we go. Bonus. Uh, we're going to go with a grill, though, on the front here where we're going to put our number plate in. We sh I showed you this tip last episode. So that's where that's going to go. And uh, I think I want to have some, again, some fog lights like we had last time down here. Because this is a lot of blank space that isn't doing anything otherwise. Um, or 
Where are they? This one. I know it's a bumper bar, right? But if we put this in here and we mirror it. A lot of cars have this kind of thing. Let me get a little bit taller. Maybe a little bit. No, you don't like that tall. Like they have a little plastic strip that goes around it. We can make it out of plastic if we wanted to as well. Yeah, I don't think it'll work with chrome. But I think that looks good lining up to the number plate area there. Yeah, just add, it fills up that space. Uh, and then maybe have some little spotlights. Maybe square ones on this one. We done round ones on the last one. Let's go with some square ones. Whoops. Uh-oh. Control Z. That's why you want to be careful where you're clicking. Like down here. More in the middle. About there. Yeah. That makes that makes sense to me. We'll go with that. Or we take round rid of these completely and we put them at the bottom. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna go with that. I think that looks just it looks sleeker, doesn't it? Whoops. Control Z. <laughs> oh, thank the heavens for Control Z. We don't need any bonnet scoop on it, that would look ridiculous. Uh, we don't need any wings or spoilers or anything on there. Fuel cap, definitely need. Let's go with a, a sort of rounded square one. Put that on the side. My fuel cap's on that side, so I always seem to do fuel caps on this side, because this is what my car is. Uh, for handles, you know, these handles actually look pretty nice. Yeah, we'll just go with these. These are like your normal ones. So we'll put uh, ones with locks on the front. We'll put ones without locks on on the back because you don't usually have a lock one on the on the back of the car. Bring it down a little bit. Good, perfect. Like last episode, this was probably going to be pretty long as well. Uh, mirrors. You know that's pretty nice actually with the indicator on it. We might even be able to remove that indicator if we have if we use these. It's a nice little bit of chrome on it. Nah, they're a little bit too trucky. I think we want to go with round. Or a little bit rounder. They're nice. We'll go with them. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. That's the one. That's the one. You know it as soon as you see it. Um, let's go with... Let's, let's try to do the different one. I have that one on top there. We'll leave it that colour. I think it looks quite nice. We could put it at the front. Yeah, let's put it at the front on that one. That's pretty cool. Number plates. Boom. And down here or up there? Up there. Boom. Yep. Bumper bars we don't need. Badge. We know what to do. I just put the Z on the front and the back for my name. Up there or up there? No, down here. The Z. And the Z. Yeah, it looks so cool. Very, very um, executive looking, isn't it? Uh, wheels. We don't want nothing sporty looking. I mean, that's pretty normal. Isn't it? That's just like a normal rim style. We'll go with that. Exhausts. We don't want no exhaust like coming out of the bumper like we had in the last car. It's just going to be one of those nice exhausts that sit under the car. It's a road car. There we go. Maybe move it down a little bit. Just sits under the car there nicely. Uh, maybe we should stick a rear fog light on as well. Like just one that sits on the one side. So we'll unmirror it. Like that. Some cars only have one. Or do we want two? Nah, I like the one. Yeah, on there. Cool. We'll go with that then. I like how it's sunk back a little as well. Alright, I think we're about done, right? Oh, and because this is going to be a turbo one, we can put turbo on the back. Turbo. There we go. Because we are going to have a little turbo on it to make it more economical. Not to improve performance, just to make it more economical. That might be wheel size on there too. Alright, so there is our sensible hatchback. I think it looks pretty smart. Engine. Inline four, normal sort of engine here, and let's go with um, cast iron. You know, two liters probably about right for what we want here. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be I'm going to think ahead to next episode. We're going to go with a two liter engine capac family capacity, but then we're going to do a variant of this one's going to have a 1.6 liter in it. Okay, uh, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. We're going to go with overhead cam, four overhead cams. I mean, that's just normal pretty modern normal sort of thing nice engine uh cast iron and we don't need any 
variable valve timing on there. Uh, we're going to go with probably just cast, cast, cast. We might have to upgrade that. We might have to. It might start. Our engine might uh, make so much power or too much power for these to be able to take. But these are going to be nice and cheap and we want this car to be affordable. So this is where the variant capacity comes in. So we can have a maximum of a 2 litre engine out of this. But this is going to be a 1.6 litre version of that car. Which isn't uncommon for vehicles, especially BMW. They always have a 1.4, 1.6, a 1.8 and a 2 litre and maybe a 2.5 litre super version. So, let's just drop that down a little bit to uh, 1.6 litre. There we go. So, 1.6 litre variant out of there. We're not going to get, you know, huge horsepowers out of this. I think 100 and 110, 115 would be nice to get. Compression, um, we'll put out a little tiny bit. We'll leave that where it is. Turbo, we are going to put a turbocharger on it. I'm going to make it ball bearing for the moment. I might be able to drop that back down. And for the moment, we're going to put a huge... Well, I probably don't need that. We're going to put a medium one. We'll probably go down to small or maybe even tiny. But just so we get the airflow through for testing, we'll put a medium one on. And we'll just tune it to a default fuel economy look. But we will have to tune that quite a lot. We'll go injection. We don't, No point putting a carburetor on a modern engine like this. Uh, we're not going to go with direct injection. I think we're going to go with... You know, multi-point would be nice. Let's... Let's keep the engineering time down. We want we want it cheap. Uh, we want... Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe multi-point would... Hmm. I'm going to go with multi-point. I'm going to go with the multi-point EFI. I think it just looks more what I wanted to go with. Uh, and that's a little bit too much. <laughs> We're going to run on, again, premium fuel. Because it's just... We could run it on regular, but premium will be fine. I'm going to drop the fuel mixture down to be quite lean. So we get more fuel efficiency out of it. We're going to leave the ignition timing where it is. We'll leave the RPM limit where it is as well. Uh, we can only put short cast headers on, though, because of the turbo. It really sucks, that does. Like, that really sucks. Um, I don't know how we can change that. Um, it didn't do that in the old version of the game, but it just seems to in, in the Unreal Engine version. We'll put a slightly bigger exhaust on it, but I don't think we need to go any bigger than that. And we'll go with the high three-way. Uh, probably either baffled, baffled or reversed baffled. For the moment, we'll do baffled, baffled, so it's nice and quiet. All right, the car's knocking. 100% knocking. We only made 12 horsepower. This is fine. We just look over here. Try the compression or the ignition timing. That's what it always says. There are other ways that you can fix it. We can drop the ignition timing down. As you can see, that already dropped the knocking. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll drop the compression a little bit. Because that just is a quicker way to drop it down. Okay. 112 horsepower is actually sort of what we were aiming for. Um, that, that's about what we said. At, what I said at the beginning. I reckon we can get probably a little bit more power out of this. So let's try and get 125 horsepower. And it's definitely... Why does that make it... Why is that less smooth? It looks so much more smoother to me. Like, that looks so much smoother than that did. I suppose the torques... You know, alright then. We'll put it there, and we'll get some more power up somewhere else. Maybe even out of the turbo here. So, I'm looking mostly now at the new fuel efficiency. This one right here, okay? At the moment, the engine can do 23 miles to the gallon, but I reckon we can get a little bit more out of it than that. By just tuning a little bit. 24. 25. Maybe drop the boost down. I want to be able to get some power out of this. At the moment we want 100 horsepower. Which really isn't quite good enough. 25 I think is, is pretty good though. Oops. Definitely noted. Definitely liked exactly where I had it. What can this rev to? Huh, you know what? I think 58,000 is pretty good for reliability here. We're going to keep the compression where it is. Once you've got the compression where you want it, I don't really recommend you change it all that often. I might bump it up though. Oh, I can't. Oh, 106. 106 is about right there. If I make that smaller... Oh, no, it does need a medium. Definitely does need a medium. We were right there to begin with. 
Now, I'm going to get a little more power out of this turbo. I'm going to keep fuel economy up, but I'm going to try and get more power out of it. 125 would be lovely to have. Ooh. 125 horsepower, 21 miles to the gallon. That's not great, 21, but once we get the engine tune on, I think we'll be okay. I'd like to get 35. 35 would be really nice to have. You know, that's not bad. It's got a really good performance rating as well for little 1.6. It's quite light, only 300 uh, pounds. So I, th I think we're pretty good there. Even we might need to get. There you go. Try and. Oh, what's the exhaust like? Tur it's not like in the turbo, that's for sure. Uh, I don't mind about that. It's fine. We're, we're, we're doing fine how we are. Loudness, it's not very loud. 27.2. It's definitely good for a road. Let's name it. You always should name it. It's a inline four. Four overhead cam. You probably could go with dual overhead cams on this. Uh, and then the variant is a 1.6 litre, 125 horsepower. 125 horsepower is quite sprightly for a car like this. Let's listen to it. Ooh, it's got a nice low rumble. Ooh. A little bit of turbo hiss on there as well. You know, I'm happy with that. We're going to move on. Four wheel, uh, front wheel drive. Um, that's what they are on, on these sort of little hatchbacks. So front wheel drive is what it is. We're going to go with a manual gearbox in this one. A six speed manual gearbox. I reckon the top speed would be around 128 uh, at a guess. But we'll always come back to it. Uh, a differential. Do we want a differential in here? I could go with a geared one. Now we're going to leave it open. I mean, we might come back to that, but we, we, we should really leave it where it is. Medium compound, because it's a sensible car. And uh, for the tyres, I'll probably leave the tyres about where they are at the moment. 195s is a, a, are about right, maybe. Yeah, 195s are probably about right. We can bump the wheels up, though. I think, you know, 18 or 19-inch wheels now are sort of standard on these kind of cars. And we'll go with alloy wheels, because it just is nice to have alloy wheels. Brakes, we don't need carbon ceramic. We probably don't even need vented. Solid discs would probably be good enough for us maybe even two pistons bump them up a little bit uh, and we'll go with solid discs one piston on the back we'll bump that up a little bit as well it's front wheel drive so we don't really need good brakes at all on the back but we definitely don't want drum we're 2009 we definitely had disc brakes all the way around no downforce needed calling airflow oops i'll just bump it up a little bit i just like to have a little bit more than what it wants uh five seats so we get three in the back uh, we'll go with standard interior, a standard CD, um, electric power steering is just standard, these sort of ones. Uh, and then we'll go traction control and ABS, because we don't need anything more than that. Advanced safety, stuff what people want. We're going for like a, we want it a little bit sporty, but it's sort of a family car, isn't it? That's sort of what we want. I don't know what the markets are going to say, what the markets are, are going to want out of it. We'll go with, um... Active suspension, comfort suspension. Yeah, go on then. We need to be careful here because obviously the um, uh, the units and the cost, material costs, go up. You know, quite a lot for for what we get out of it. So we need to be a little bit careful. Material costs are the first one. You know, um, look at look at the jump there. Boom, boom, boom. I might go with gas mono tubes just to keep the price down a little bit. It might not. That might not be too good. And then. There you go, family is the top one. That's what we wanted it for. What's the best suspension setup for us? Normal. Perfect. No bottoming out. That's about right. So, now it's time to go tune it. Uh, what is the... The estimated top speed was 123. I said 128. You know, 123 out of a 1.6. I don't think that's too bad. And if I bump it up to the gear ratio, up to 126 miles an hour, we actually get point, like two of a mile an hour over. 0 to 16, 11 seconds is is not something that you should complain about. 10.9, 10.7. I'll go with the 10.7, 0 to 60 out of a out of a 1.6 liter engine. Yeah, too right. Uh, now this is where we can really make some difference here by ch seeing what happens if we click some of these. Five, four. Yeah, so it, it wants none. So you can really easily sell what the see what the market wants. Just by like changing it yourself. Like it definitely likes. We had it right with the medium. 
I think tires is where we're going to have some problems. We've got 1.4% wheel spin. Uh, this is, is, is... Actually, you can make it worse. We want bigger back wheels? Yeah, bigger back wheel. Oop. Go down. Thumb that up. Yes. Nope. Nope. Go down. Where is my... I thought I had it at 80. I had it at 80. Didn't I? Sure, I had it at 80. Where's the balance point? Nine, 79.5. I'm sure I had it at 80. I'm sure I did. Okay, anyway, what does it look like? That's about right for the tyres. I think that's about right. And if I bump these out a little bit. There we go. Yeah. So I just bumped them out. They sit nice uh, on... Well, that's definitely better. But it's a little bit worse, but it looks better. Okay, brakes. Where are we? Uh, I undershot it a little bit with the front. So maybe three pistons on the front instead. And bump that up. That's better. 4.5% brake fade, though. Well, that's a lot better. Look. What if we go up bigger? Yeah, no. That's about what we wanted it. Two pistons on the back? Nope. Drop that down. 87. Pad type. Now, I haven't talked about this one, but if we go more towards the red, we get more racy brakes. If you go more towards the bottom, we get more comfort brakes. Now, as you can also see, the higher we go into the race, the less brake fade that we have. Um, I think we might want to go with vented discs. And that's dropped it to zero. Maybe vented discs on the front. Nah, we're going to have to go vented all the way around to get rid of that brake fade. Brake fade is very important. We definitely don't want any anywhere. Three pistons on the front, one on the back. That's all it needs. It's right. It's bumped up to 82.2. Not the highest. I mean, we could definitely get a lot higher than that, but it's about right for what we want. That's the wrong way. 82.5, 82.6, 82 82.6. With no brake fade still. Good. We leave all this. Leave that. Uh, we'll do that then. Five seats. Premium. Um, a standard, standard. If I go to premium, what does it say? Oh, it actually goes up a little bit for premium. Oh, and goes up for basic? Really? That's what they want. They want premium interior. But a basic sat nav? Uh, but a basic CD? Okay. That's what it wants. That's what the market's calling for. And it definitely likes advanced. All right, now we've got... Yeah. Okay, we, we Uber shot it with the springs. That's good. We made it cheaper. We had it right with the gas monotube, though. Ooh. Ooh. Really? Active sway bars. It likes more. Okay, save. Let's go through again now. 85.5, 85.1, 85.4, no, normal, 85.5 is what it wants. Uh, have I explained everything? Okay, uh, we explained this last episode, but we've got a drivability of 99.8. We could probably tune that a little bit by helping with the camber here. 99.9. Make it a little bit sporty there. I mean, 99.9. Is pretty good, right? We'll stick with that. And it's right on the blue line, which is optimized for understeer. So that's pretty good. The suspension, I didn't explain the suspension last episode. Uh, the yellow line is our rear wheel. The red line is our front wheel. And that's pretty stiff suspension right there. It's like a ba uh, This graph is showing what happens if you go over a bump. And uh, our suspension is like rock solid by the looks to me. You want a little bounce usually, but it lines up together where we want it. So, I mean... I'm not going to complain too much. That's really an ugly, really, really ugly um, bump test. But uh, oh, we're bottoming out a little bit as well. 0 0.14. There we go. Just lift it up by a couple of... What was that? Point, point 0.2 inches. I think that looks about right. And we stop bottoming out now. Can we add anything to the top speed now? Nope. 123.7 is a very, very respectful uh, speed. In fact, it says 124 there. All right, what was our MPG in the end? 34.8. Oh, we wanted 35. Um, that was our goal. Can we get 35? I'm trying to, like, lighten the car a little bit. Four seats, does it? Oh, 
Oh, and it makes it better for family as well. Yeah, okay, so there we go. So making it four seasons out of five, put not only made it more desirable in the market, it also got us to a goal of 35 miles to the gallon. I like it. Not 16, 10.3 seconds. Very, very reasonable. Uh, test track. Just skip it. What does it sound like? Very low. Ooh, I like that built of the turbo. All right, it gets around in one minute, 39 seconds. On the top gear board, we're definitely down the list. We're not expecting to get high though with a road legal car. 139 actually puts us, wow, at the uh, Subaru Impreza WRX. Wow. <laughs> uh, a little bit slower than the Honda Civic Type R. Uh, a little bit slower than the Saab 95 Turbo. Or Air, five, Saab 95 Aero, sorry. Ah, no way. The BMW 318 is 1 minute 43. So we are 4 seconds faster than the BMW 318 in a 1.6 litre. I'm happy with that. Now, something that I didn't go into last episode is that we can actually go into, like, deep stats here. And we can see where we can improve the car. So it doesn't like the torque curve in drivability. The gearbox... It always prefers having an automatic. That's just how the game is set up. If you put an automatic gearbox in it, it would actually make it a lot better. In fact, the, the car might even sell better with an automatic. Yeah, 92. Boom. It just shot us right up. Dropped the top speed down to 120, but boy, does the car sell a lot better with an automatic. 92 from 86.5. All right, we'll make it an automatic. I don't care. <laughs> so that's got, got rid of that. Um, you can go through all sorts, you know, sportiness here i always get bad circle test i don't really know what that's about power steering is minus 15 because this power steering is like two oh yeah i actually liked variable hydraulic better than electric okay uh so it's a really easy way like just through looking at two things we've just made our car like a million times better this is why i can spend like literally hours <laughs> going through one car um, obviously, the performance on the car is only a 1.6 litre. Uh, this doesn't compare it to other 1.6 litre cars. This compares it to like any car that you can make in the game. So, of course, we're going to be down on top speed because you can make 200 mile an hour cars in this game. Or 250, maybe even 300 miles an hour. I don't know. I would probably try and make a 300 miles an hour car. Um, but, I mean, it's pretty good. It's weird how in sportiness... It loves the torque, giving us a plus 2% bonus for our torque. But in drivability, it gave us a minus 12.1. Well, I suppose that's torque curve, and that's the amount of torque that we make. How much torque do we make? 133 pounds, foot pounds. Okay. Comfort, we're good in comfort. That's what we want out of a family car. We don't need it to be prestigious. I mean, it's not a Bentley, and it's nice and safe. That's exactly what you want out of a nice family car. Uh, it's not too practical. We do have a plus 10% bonus to cargo volume, but we're not going to get a huge amount of stuff in it, the load capacity, because it's a hatchback. You're not going to ever get much in a hatchback, are you? Minus 5% because we've only got four seats. If we made it five seats, that would be better, but the market wanted us to have only four. Uh, utility, obviously, we are not a towing vehicle. We're not, <laughs> we're not here to pull caravans and stuff with this kind of vehicle. Off-road is terrible. It's definitely not an off-road car. And here is our MPG. So we're actually hitting, actually, 52.9 MPG. However, because, uh, I don't know how it exactly works this out, you know, because here it says 52.9 MPG out of, that's the average of 56, 60, 53, 53, and 34, obviously, is going to be at 75 miles per hour. But then it just goes and sticks 33.3 .3 on us. Maybe because, I don't know. I don't know how I don't know how this 33.3 works out. I always like to look at this one because <laughs> it makes me feel better. Um, well, did it make it 33.3 by putting a automatic gearbox in it? If you put manual in it, 35. How strange is that? I'm gonna keep it manual then because that was my goal. 55.5 MPG overall. Yeah. I don't know how this one works out. I want to ask the developer. Developer, how does this work out? How do we get the num this number? Why isn't it this number? Seeing as though this is the average of all those put together. You would have thought that would have been the actual MPG. Why is it here? I don't know. I don't get it. Um, and yeah, we can see what it looks like in other areas as well. So we actually get... We can actually sell it in there as well. It doesn't sell in this area though. It's too expensive to sell in this area. 13000 to make. What would the car sell for? Like, I don't know what it would sell for. Would you sell it for like 15000 car or 14000 car? 
probably. I don't know. Sounds about right. Let's go and take a picture of it, though. So we'll scroll down. Uh, picture. I'm not a fan of these front headlights, you know. I'm really not a fan of these front headlights. Uh, we're going to leave it here in the photo studio, though, because I think the white against the black is going to be nice. Like how you see it in the brochures or in the car rooms. Maybe we take it from the back. No, I don't really like that. We'll have it from the front. I like taking the pictures from the front here. Um, maybe put a filter on it. Ooh, I like that. That really makes the black stand out, doesn't it? Yeah, snap. If you guys enjoyed the episode, hit that like button. If you haven't already, done, if you guys enjoyed the episode, hit that like button. If you haven't already, done, feel free to subscribe. We shall see you in the next episode.